I'd like to welcome you all to uh, Auburn Christian Tabernacle. It's a good place to be today. I love this little church. I love what it's set up on. I, I love that it's set up on the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Foundation is sure. Yeah. That God is inhabited Glory to God. our church. How do I know that? Because He's inhabited the people. Yes. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. So I thank you for coming. If you brought a Bible <clears throat> this afternoon, you can go over to the book of Matthew. We'll try to preach a little dab, if God will bless us. Bless Chapter 21, the book of Matthew. I'll start in about the 28th verse. I have a thought on my heart. Matthew 21. 28. Matthew 21, 28. Give me a heads up when you've all found it. All right, I'll start reading. <clears throat> Jesus had just got done asking the question about... John and his baptism. And they wanted to know by what authority Jesus was doing the things that he was doing. I got asked that not long ago. I had a pastor say, what authority are you under? I said, by the authority of the king, Jesus Christ. That's my authority. But you see, this day and age, people want organizations, titles. Who set you out to do this uh, work here? Who, who's over it? Well, I can say here at Auburn, God is. Because we, we're not beholding to none of you. You get me? Amen. God's the head of this church. Amen. Not me. Not Brother Chad. Not Papa, but God. We gave it to God. God put the vision in our heart. God set things in motion. God sent us the money to buy it and equip it. And God sustains it. It is God's. That's the authority. Yes. And they wanted to know, Jesus, who gave you authority to do these things? So Jesus just simply said, well, I'll ask you a question. And if you answer my question, then I'll answer your question. So Jesus said, John's baptism, is it of God or of man? You see, he put him on the spot. Because the majority realized that John was sent by God. So they submitted to his baptism which was a baptism of repentance. Had they have said that it was of men, the very people that stood around would have rocked them with rocks. But they also realized if they would have said, it's of God, then Jesus would have said, then why didn't you submit to it? Yeah. Jesus said, my father worketh here and I work here. There's the authority. That's the same here. I don't need your man-made creed. I don't need your man-made dogma. I don't need any of your man-made stuff. When they ordained me, they said, skate lightly, we have not give you the keys to the kingdom. Of which I replied, you're too late, brother. God's already gave me the keys through Jesus Christ. He's the one that calls. He's the one equips. He's the one that sends you forth. And He's the one that blesses. And if He doesn't bless, you don't preach. And as long as He says preach, we will preach. When God says be silent, we'll sit down. That's where we stand. I know that might seem hard to some of you, but that's how it is. 
28th verse. Jesus says, but what think ye? Now he's talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He's talking to the rulers of the church of his day. The ones that were in authority. He says, but what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and he went. And he came to the second son and he said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. But he went not. Jesus asked the question, whether of them twain did the will of his father? They said unto him, the first. The one that said, I won't go, but then repented and went. And Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. I'm going to say, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear the publicans and the harlots go in before you leaders of the churches who just happen to be hypocrites. Amen. Spurgeon's definition, Charles Hayden Spurgeon of London, England back in the 1800s, his definition of a hypocrite was a man that sits in a rowboat and looks one way and rows the other. We have a lot today that worship Jesus with the lip, but the heart is far from him. It's just lip service, not heart service. If you love people, you show grace and mercy. And by that same love, all men shall know you are my disciples. Without love, you're none of his. You're a liar and the truth's not in you if you love not your brother. If we have never seen God, and we say we love him, and we can't love the people that come under this roof whom we do see, how can we truly say we love God? Amen. For our eyes have never beheld Him. We love Him by faith. Love covers a multitude of sin. But the law will condemn while mercy triumphs over judgment. Peter, that great apostle, went up on the rooftop, Papa, while they were preparing something to eat. And while he was up on the rooftop, he had a vision. And he saw a great sheep let down, knit at the four corners with all manner of beasts and animals, all kinds of creatures. And the voice said, Slay and eat, Peter. And Peter said, Not so, Lord. Nothing, nothing. nothing common or unclean has entered my mouth. 
And the voice spake again and said, What well, God has cleansed, call not common or unclean. We're sure not obeying that today. The story of David. David, when Samuel went by the, by the voice of God and the direction of God to anoint a servant down to the house of Jesse, he started with the number one child who happened to be head and shoulders above everybody else. And some of them said, surely that's him. Yeah. But God said, no, that's not him. And he went right on down the line to all of the sons of Jesse. And God said, none of them. So the prophet said unto him, is there no more? Yes, I have one more little ruddy son. He's out in the field taking care of the sheep. You see, they didn't want to include little David because there was a dispute of who's David's lineage, who he truly was. Jesus came through that lineage. Bathsheba bore a son. David was caught up in sin. And the child died. And David wept and asked God to forgive him. If you plead the blood of Jesus Christ, God will forgive your sin. I had a brother say to me, the blood wasn't shed. And I said, you need to read the whole story. Jesus was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. By grace through the everlasting blood covenant, he was included before the stars were hung. And they had a second child whose name was Solomon. And through that lineage of perverse sin, Jesus came. There was a woman when they were ready to take over of the city. And the spies went in to a little harlot whose name was Rahab. And she, being favored by God, hung a little red cord out the window. And her and her household were spared. Jesus also came through the lineage of Rahab the harlot. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? Jesus is the God of the broken. Yes. He is the God of those that have no way, no hope to come unto God. On, he is the God of all And therefore Jesus says the publicans and the harlots will go in before you leaders of the churches, you hypocrites, you Sadducees, you Pharisees. The harlots and the publicans have free grace before you will have it. Amen. That's the truth. You sit on the high seat and snarl down your nose at those that you think are beneath you. 
You bring those in fine garments to the front of your pews because you think they have money. And you set the lesser that you esteem lesser in the backs of your churches. And Jesus says, if you need to judge in the church, go to those that are less esteemed and let them judge. Why? Because they have a more accurate understanding of righteousness and grace. Yes. The bigger sinners that are saved by God's grace are the ones that love him the most. One owed 50 pence and one owed 50,000. And when they had nothing to pay with, God said unto them, which one do you think when I forgive them will love me the most? I suppose to whom owed the most. Set in your high seat. You stand on the corners with your long flat dress. And for pretense, you pray long prayers to get admiration from people. And you won't go into the kingdom yourself and you hinder everyone else that would go. You encompass land and sea to find a proselyte and when you proselyte them you make a twofold more the child of hell than yourself hypocrite vipers fighting sepulcher painted graves full of dead men's bones you have no love of God and therefore you are none of his for he that loveth God will love each other. And that love covers a multitude of sin. Call not that common that God has cleansed. You sit in your associations and you give anathema to everyone else because they're not of your association. You won't extend the right hand to fellowship. Nor will you let them participate in the body of Christ. is separating the sheep from the goats. Your organizations are dying. Your associations are dwindling and drying up like a dried stick. And there's no Spirit of God. That's because the Lord of glory is removing the candlestick from your churches. Repent. That's my word to the shepherds today. Woe unto the shepherds. You feed yourself at the expense of the flock. You know they're sick and afflicted among them, and yet you won't extend the balm of Gilead to heal one. But you judge them and run them down and run them off. Woe unto the shepherds. 
You'll find that in Ezekiel's writings if you study the Word. Repent. 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 Our churches are emptying out because of the Pharisee and Sadducee spirit that's among them. You live under the law and you extend no grace. And because that you honor the word or the written part of it, the law, and you honor not the love and the mercy and the righteousness, God is separating the goats from the sheep. Repent. Call not that common or unclean that God has cleansed. There is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And by the one spirit we are all baptized into just one body of Christ. All over the world, no matter what continent you may live on, if you've come to Jesus Christ wading through the blood of Jesus and you've been born again, you are in the body of Christ. One Lord, one faith, one body. And if you're in that body, you are of the Lord's bride. You are in the fold of God. In that day there shall be one fold and one ship. How shall you know them? By their fruit, ye shall know them. No love, no connection to Jesus. Amen. You're dried out with no Holy Ghost. They that have the Spirit are His. They that have not the Spirit are none of His. Call that not common or unclean that our God has cleansed. That's all I got for you today. I know this is a hard message. I give it to you with as much love as I can. But I tell you verily, verily, I say unto you, God is dividing the sheep and the goats. And the churches that will not fellowship the rest of the body, God is removing the candlestick. You will continue to go down in number. You will continue to dwindle in the word. Your words will fall to the ground and there will be no fire and Holy Ghost in your meanings. It will be just a dead social gathering. My prayers ascend up before God that you repent yes. and that you fill your hearts with love, not judgment. You're not a judge. I'm not a judge. If you're a judge, then you're not a doer of the word. Amen. A judge has power to execute sentence. We have no such thing. We examine fruit so that we know who we deal with. We make no judgments. Only God's the judge. So I say unto you, repent. God bless you today.